Hello everyone, and welcome to the Backpackers World Go channel. Today we're going to explore the top 20 things to do in Hokkaido. Hokkaido is a place full of charm. It is also known as the Hokkaido Island, a part of the Japanese archipelago, belonging to the Hokkaido region of Japan. Located in the north of Japan and is the second largest island in Japan. Hokkaido, facing the main island of Honshu across the Tsugaru Strait, is surrounded by the sea on all sides, enveloped by the Pacific Ocean, the Sea of Okhotsk, and the Japan Sea. Its vast land accounts for about 22% of the total area of Japan. The terrain is high in the middle and low around, with volcanoes distributed. It is rich in natural resources, with abundant resources such as coal mines, extensive forests, and towering mountains. Hokkaido is known worldwide for its cherry blossoms and snows capes, as well as lavender flower seas. The best time to visit the Hokkaido? In Hokkaido, every season offers its own unique charm. In spring, from late April to early May, the cherry blossoms in Hakodate and Shizunai are a delicate spectacle, while July's lavender fields in Furano and Bie bloom vibrantly. Come summer, the landscape is awash with purple hues, ideal for family vacations with its mild 28-degree weather. The autumn months bring a rustic palette of reds and golds to the region, best seen from mid-September, accompanied by a bounty of seafood and harvest. Winter transforms the island into a snowy retreat, perfect for skiing and hot spring soaks, with the ice flows of Abashiri and Monbetsu putting on a breathtaking display from late January to February. No matter the season, Hokkaido beckons with its seasonal splendors suited for every traveler. Without further delay, let's recap on the top 20 things to do in Hokkaido, Japan. Number one, cherry blossom season in Asahikawa. Spring in Asahikawa brings forth clouds of blooming cherry blossoms. At a park along the Ishikari River, I enjoyed the cherry blossoms, their pink and white petals swaying gently in Hokkaido's breeze, adding a soft touch to the far north landscape. Sitting under the cherry trees, enjoying an outdoor picnic while watching the petals drift in the wind, offered a peaceful and beautiful moment that made me forget the bustle of everyday life. Number two. Otaru Canal and Warehouses The ancient warehouses along the Otaru Canal are witnesses to Hokkaido's maritime trade. Today, these warehouses are transformed into restaurants and galleries, converting the business atmosphere into one of art and culinary delight. At night, gentle lights reflect off the tranquil waters of the canal, creating a romantic scene with interweaving lights and shadows. During winter nights, Walking along the canal with friends, the snowy landscape and lighting blend into a picturesque scene that kept me captivated. Number three, food exploration in Hakodate Morning Market. Known for its fresh seafood delicacies, the Hakodate Morning Market offers a plethora of local cuisines that reliably delight the taste buds. From enjoying sea urchins to tasting marinated salmon roe, Every bite encapsulated the essence of Hakodate's marine abundance. This unique culinary exploration elevated not only my sensory experience, but also my understanding of the local culture. Number four, Ramen Street in Sapporo. Sapporo, the birthplace of miso ramen, is a place that no foodie would want to miss. Ramen Street is the labor of this love for ramen, where the most delectable bowls of steaming hot ramen are served to eager food enthusiasts. Each slurp of the rich miso broth, dancing with noodles and topped with succulent char siu, was an affirmation of the culinary skills and dedication that define Hokkaido's comfort food at its finest. Number five, whale watching off the coast of Kushiro. Taking a boat out into the Pacific, off the coast near Kushiro, was a quest for a glimpse of the ocean's gentle giants. The thrill of spotting a whale in its natural habitat is unmatched. The sheer size and grace as it breaches the ocean's surface is an awe-inspiring and humbling experience that pays homage to the magnificence of marine life. Number six, Ainu culture at Nibutani. 
The indigenous Ainu culture is an integral part of Hokkaido's heritage. Here at Nibutani, I delved into their rich traditions, craftsmanship, and deep respect for nature. Through museum visits and interactions with the Ainu people, I learned about their distinctive wood carving techniques, intricate patterns, and age-old folklore that resonate with the spirit of the land. Number seven, Blue Pond in Bié. In late spring and early summer, the Blue Pond in Bié is a true natural miracle. Its mysteriously glossy blue water surface is surrounded by trees and shrouded in fresh air. Upon my first visit, I was deeply attracted by its colors. The pond's surface was so calm it seemed to reflect the sky's soul. When sunlight hits the water, the pond's blue becomes deeper and more enchanting, reminding me of the pristine beauty of an untainted world. Number eight, homemade ice cream at Ferrano Farm. At the Ferrano Farm, I indulged in a world-class delicacy made from fresh milk, homemade ice cream. With a rich texture, the cold treat allowed me to taste the continuous sweetness of milk. Conversing with the farm owner, I learned the story behind the ice cream and their pursuit of high quality ingredients. This not only filled me with respect for the land, but also allowed me to savor the deep culture and hospitality of Hokkaido. Number nine, lavender fields in Ferrano. Come summer, the lavender fields in Ferrano are a sweeping canvas of vibrant purple. Walking amongst these fragrant blooms, with bees humming and the sun casting a golden hue over the landscape, was almost ethereal. Lavender ice cream in hand, the floral breeze was a reminder of Ferrano's allure that goes beyond its visual beauty to encompass scents and flavors. Number 10 biking through Ferrano's flower fields. In the colorful splendor of Ferrano, I chose a bicycle to navigate through the flower fields. The fragrance of flowers and the waving wheat fields showcase the land's utmost natural beauty. Gradually distancing from the crowd, alone on this path surrounded by nature, I understood the essence of travel. No matter where you are, the beauty of nature always inspires awe and joy. In that moment, I felt an indescribable connection to the land. Number 11, farming experience in Tokachi. In the heart of Hokkaido, in Tokachi, I partook in a true farming experience. The arrival of spring reawakened the earth, and under the guidance of local farmers, I experienced tilling, touching the soil, and witnessing the miracle of sowing seeds. In the afternoon, I also helped herd sheep and tried milking. This close encounter with nature and witnessing the growth of life offered me deep reflections on living and working, serving as a retreat from the hustle and an embrace of simplicity. Number 12, Leisure by the Lake Shikotsu. At Lake Shikotsu, I found a rare tranquility. The lake was gleaming, reflecting the blue sky and the green of distant mountains. Here, time seemed to dilute and flow more slowly. Small boats on the lake, couples walking along the shore, and the gentle breeze all seemed to share their unique stories with me. In the evening, a mist rose from the lake, wrapping it in a veil that added a touch of mystery and fantasy. Number 13, bear watching in Shiritoko National Park. In the untouched wilderness of Shiritoko National Park, I had the exclusive opportunity to watch wild bears. A stroll along the wooden walkways in the park offered close contact with these majestic creatures without posing any threat. Observing their behavior and acknowledging their coexistence with this environment was indeed a thrilling experience as it underlined nature's breathtaking power and balance. Number 14, Hokkaido Shrine Visit. A visit to the tradition-steeped Hokkaido Shrine was a spiritual journey that connected me directly with Japanese culture. Amid the calm and serene ambiance and the delicate architectural beauty of the shrine, I felt a sense of inner peace. The picturesque surroundings and the blessings received from the shrine made this journey worthwhile. 
Number 15, Historic Village of Hokkaido. Stepping into the historic village of Hokkaido is like walking back in time to the Meiji and Taisho eras. Themed to reflect this period, the open-air museum's perfectly preserved buildings and artifacts told stories of a bygone era. As I wandered past old farmhouses, government offices, and sprawling estates, I was transported to a time capsule that signified the growth and development of Hokkaido. Number 16, Sapporo Snow Festival. Winter in Hokkaido is incomplete without experiencing the Sapporo Snow Festival, where everything is covered in white snow, transforming the city into a fantasy world. The majestic ice sculptures stand tall, each detail showcasing the dedication of the artists. I once stood in front of an ice sculpture, astonished not only by its intricacy, but also by the artist's perseverance and passion in such cold weather. At night, Colorful lights illuminate the sculptures, turning the area into a dazzling fairy tale world that is unforgettable. Number 17, Noboribetsu Hell Valley Hot Spring Experience. In Noboribetsu Hell Valley, I experienced the most primitive hot spring journey. Unlike the luxurious hot spring facilities in cities, every steaming hot spring pool here is a masterpiece of nature. Here, the vitality of the earth seems to surge from its core, and every dip in the hot springs feels like a purification of both body and soul. Even in the harshest winter, the warm waters make one forget the cold, leaving only a dialogue with nature. Number 18, Hakodate Mountain Night View. Atop Hakodate Mountain, I witnessed one of the world's three most beautiful nightscapes. Amid the mountaintop breeze, the city's lights spread like stars laid down to earth, each one representing a warm residence. The lights of the city mingled with the starry sky, and the coastline stretched into the darkness of the sea horizon like dazzling chains, with the lights of fishing boats resembling fireflies on the water, echoing with the stars above. The contemplative silence amidst the lively scene was profound, as if designed to afford one the space for thought and imagination. Number 19, Abashiri Drift Ice Sightseeing. One of the unique phenomena that Hokkaido offers is the drift ice sightseeing in Abashiri during winter. A special icebreaker ship maneuvered its way through the dense layer of sea ice. The sight of the snow-covered icy spectacle stretching out endlessly was a sight to behold. It's a stark reminder of the magic of nature and the cycle of seasons. Number 20, Skiing in Niseko. Known as one of the world's best powder havens, skiing in Niseko was an exhilarating experience. The smooth snow-covered slopes coupled with the breathtakingly picturesque landscape offered an unforgettable adventure. Whether you're a seasoned skier or a beginner riding on the gentler slopes, the joy and rush of sliding down the powder snow is a thrill that feels like no other. Today's video, Top 20 Things to Do in Hokkaido, Japan have been introduced. Before I end, I'm introducing two superb hotels to you. Mitsui Garden Hotel Sapporo West is ideally located, just a five minute walk from JR Sapporo Station. Modern amenities, a rich breakfast, on-site hot springs, and friendly service make it perfect for visiting Sapporo's attractions like Ramen Street, Hokkaido Shrine, Otaru Canal, and Asahikawa. Lagant Stay Hakodate Ekimai Hotel boasts a prime location, modern amenities, and friendly service. Within walking distance to the morning market and ropeway station, it offers easy access to sites like Noboribetsu, Hell Valley, and Furano. Convenient transportation makes it an ideal base for exploring Hakodate and its surroundings. All the above hotels are described. Thanks for watching and don't forget to give me a like, subscribe, and share. Looking forward to the next adventure.